Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to do my first uh, lineup uh, build for the main slate for this coming Sunday in the NFL. Uh, Bobby and I are going to do a kind of a, a more complete breakdown tomorrow uh, when we do our video. But I'd like to do just kind of an early build to kind of just again, just start using the contest simulation tools available on SaberSim and seeing what they would look like at this early uh, juncture. Now, again, projections will change. People will be ruled out and all this stuff. But I think that doing this um, as many times as you can, really, it just improves your ability to you know make use of the tools available to you. So what we're going to do is we are going to upload the true DFS projections <laughs> as they stand today. Um, not get into the nuts and bolts of the games. We're just going to run our builds and see what they kind of look like. Um, now, again, I, I, we can guess maybe uh, what to expect. I mean, maybe, I don't know, maybe Chiefs and Chargers have a big total. That that could be something. But, uh, rather than have any preconceived notions about what's going to happen, we should just kind of upload the projections and do it. Uh, I also am going to project predict that it's going to be one cheap running back, I think, for the Rams that's going to show up in pretty much all the lineups. But we'll take a look at that. All right, so first, let's upload the projections um, as they stand today. And we're going to do this in two, two or three iterations. First thing we're going to do is we're just going to run a build with 150 lineups. So what we're doing is we're not making any changes. We're putting 150 lineups in. It's going to, well, I kind of misspoke. We're displaying 150 lineups. We're building a pool of 5,000 lineups. Now, all these settings are kind of, you know, almost irrelevant because because we're going to be changing, you know, what types of lineups we're going to want in a minute. We're not going to make any lineup rules. We're just going to run these just as is. Now, what it's doing is it's already kind of building high upside lineups. It's not just building the optimal because of those initial settings. Um but we're going to look at these two ways. First, we're going to look at them just kind of as is. And then we are going to apply the contest simulation settings uh, to the build and see what a portfolio of lineups look like if we knew we're putting them in the Millie Maker. Okay? Uh, we, as the week goes on, I'm going to add more contests to the simulation settings. Um, but again, the idea and the concept is that, it, yes, it's great to be able to build optimal lineups. And it's great to be able to build good upside lineups, but it would be incredible is if you could build those lineups specifically tailored to the exact contest you're ent entering. And that's what the contest simulation tools do. Um, okay, so if, if you even want to look, uh, first thing you'd be getting, if we made no changes, is not surprisingly, whoa, not actually 100% of the Zach Evans. It would only give me 33%, which is sort of interesting. And then with the team stacks, Baltimore would be the highest owned, uh, followed by Tampa and Seattle. And then the other thing to look at is stack exposure. Uh, again, these are very common, you know, stack settings. Now you can mess around with this, but I prefer to just leave it kind of for now. One thing you could do, you know, we could do this now or later, is change the min uniques from min uniques one to min uniques two. Just give yourself a couple more outs. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to run the contest. Sim. And when we do that, I'll remind people of what the settings I used for this. So I already did this kind of in advance, and I put Millimaker. And in the Millimaker, we put in contest size of 192,500, and then 32% for first, 20% of the entries paid, and we are running the full 50,000 sims. And then what we're going to do is we're going to see how, you know, how that, how this run differs from that initial run where we were getting the Baltimore's and, and, uh, and such. So first thing I want to do is I want to sort this, now that this is done, by Millimaker Risk Adjusted ROI and see what it looks like. All right, so now... First, let's take a look at the ownership of the players. And that actually made 
quite a bit of a difference because when you look at the highest owned players, you're actually getting 60% Mark Andrews and 16% Zay Flowers, which to me, uh, and and uh, sorry, 48% Zay Flowers. So it is all of the Baltimore. Um, and when we look at the actual stack exposure, I mean, the team stacks it will, will, don't, it will bear that out. Yeah, so 36% Baltimore in this build um, um, against Detroit. Now, curiously or interestingly, you would think that you would get a lot of Detroit runbacks with things like this. But let's see if that's actually the case. And then you'll see, by the way, Kansas City, Tampa, Green Bay, actually, and Seattle. But let's see what the the stack exposure is. So mostly is two zeros, which is interesting. You know, again, this is one of the, I think the results of the new contest simulation movement is that we're, we're learning a lot about what types of lineups actually are those you want to play versus what you instinctively wanted to play. Like for years, people were presuming that you would play a uh, quarterback with two receivers or one at least and always have a run back. The idea being that if one team is going to be pushed to score a lot, it would be because someone else on the other team um, was doing well as well. And for years, I even said, I mean, while that seems logical enough, uh, I don't know if anybody's actually proven that. And I think that with the, with the running of all these simulations, that's basically showing that the run back is not, really as as big as it was cracked up to be okay and most of the optimals from these contest sim runs are getting stuff like qb plus two and, and not really worried too much about uh, the run backs so I, I find that uh somewhat interesting so again to give you an idea of where we are at least early in the day we have early in the week we have baltimore as really the top stack by a lot followed by kansas city uh tampa Green Bay and Seattle. And when we're looking at uh, player exposures, we can do it player by player, but I don't think it's as important. But forgetting about the stacks and all that, let's see like what kind of the one-off running backs they look like. 40% Kenneth Walker, very little Zach Evans. Oh, actually, it's kind of a kind of fraudulent because it's not uh taking the flex position out of here. We'll, we'll look at that in a minute. Jerome Ford, 16%. That's pretty healthy. So when you look at the flex, you pick up, I think, some more of the Zach Evans. But not much. Wow, this is amazing. I really thought that Zach Evans was going to be locked button city. But, you know, this is what the contest sims do. It, it realizes, it takes into account that he's going to project a 40% ownership. And and they do a good job of, try, of fading off of that. So uh, I think this is uh, I think this is very interesting. I guess I could go and do a FanDuel one as well. I mean, may as well. All slates, FanDuel. Well, that's twelve games Sunday to Monday. We don't want that. We want. FanDuel, oops. Let's do the same thing. And we can, again, we'll use the, the um, two DFS projections. And we'll do the same thing. We'll see what we get. We build 150 lineups. And what we'll do is we'll start the process of getting these contest sim settings in here. So again, uh, may as well get this right. So let's see exactly what, how many people rate to be in the Sunday Millie. Uh, NFL Sunday Million is going to have, looks like, what's this called? NFL. Barely even in the in the um oh I was gonna say it's barely in the lobby but it's it's there it would be a hundred three hundred thirty three thousand people all right and that's gonna be one point 
how much the first year? Oh, only 250,000 the first, so 25%, hold on, put that in for a second. Uh, 333,000 people, is that real? All right, um, we'll call this Sunday Million. Oops, call this Sunday, uh, Sunday Million. God. Sunday Million. Save settings. Okay, so let's again take a look and see what we get. Uh, team stacks again, most 68% Baltimore. So FanDuel, it's even more, um, it's even more loaded for Baltimore. Let's just see. Jim Jordan falls short. Sure. Ah, ridiculous. Stupid waste of time. All right, so let's take a look and see what this looks like in the Sunday Million. Sort by risk-adjusted ROI and all the Baltimore. So <clears throat> one thing I do, know, do notice is you get the Jameer Gibbs as a run back in some of these. Uh, quite a bit of Jameer, Jameer Gibbs, actually. Let's take a look at that. Or is that just this is the top lineups? No, Jameer Gibbs is huge. Uh, 40% Jameer Gibbs. I guess much cheaper over here relative to this, the other players. Um, so same deal. Baltimore, Casey, Tampa. And here we're going to get more Gibbs, that natural run back. So I would imagine that the stack exposure is going to be more. Yeah, well, you still mostly two zeros, but a bunch of two ones as well. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, we'll, we'll get into a you know more in-depth breakdown of the games when Bobby and I go through this tomorrow. But I do like to get kind of an early look at what these builds tend to look like. And also, it gives me a little more practice kind of uh, manipulating these, uh, these settings. Okay, uh, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody.